Hello, in this one Deadly Poison Clone Maximized and Critical builds. First, Maximized build as it is easier to do and it's more friendly to new players. A few things to note is that you want to have the T26 unique gloves called Vespers Destruction. Those are easy to get even on low level maps. With gloves, it is necessary to dual wield, otherwise the additional hit doesn't work. Skill itself is in really good spot after the Season 6 buffs. Area of effect scaling is a little bit lacking as you can't make it wall screen wide, but the damage makes up for it. Right now, let's get into the build. Early skill board should look something like this. We start with Deadly Poison Claw and I have a Warrior Shadow in here. Warrior Shadow is the best one link you can use on this build and even though it's hard to acquire early, but you never switch this one. So if, if you have a link selection box, please pick up this one. After that, it's additional poison damage, quick attack, confidence, extract poison energy, and persistence. If you don't have persistence early, you can use Winding Wind for some movement speed, something like this, just for utility. Extract poison energy is really strong on this build. It gives you plenty of attack speed and a lot of damage jump, but at the same time, it increases our resource cost. So be careful with the resource cost and always use the better mana potions you have. After that, attack enhances fighter's rat with increased duration and time acceleration, bulwark of protection for defense enhance with increased duration and time acceleration. I'm putting shadow provocation in here, like always, just for arm amplification on that one hush it shout, lingering shout, time acceleration, and buff activation when hit. So it would work automatically, but remember to put it on your action bars, otherwise it's not gonna work. For moment, I have sprint and leap attack together with this arm. For the seal, we are using seal of persistence. This is the only one we need to use. For defense seal, I'm putting down seal of dodge, but you can use any defensive seal that you have. Is it physical domain, elemental domain, chaos, elemental resistances, whatever you need the most. And I'm using illusion accent here with earth energies because earth energies increases our attack damage and our skill on the tanks have attacks, so it works on this one. And all of these utility skills are linked with damp and resource cost, so we wouldn't run out of mana. For Zodiacs, remember that specialization points open up when you spend 22 points, second specialization 45, and third specialization 70. But I'm first of all gonna show you non spec points and then spec points. So just remember, spend your points accordingly. Whenever spec opens up, you spend those points on specialization first. So Afros, Swamp, Jewel, Stem, Flash, Rainbow, Dewdrop, Breath, Artemis, Dust, Stench, Power of Harmony, if your stats, strength, dexterity, and intelligence are more than 200, but with daggers, it's really easy to do that. L Leia, Minstrel, and right now I'm going to show you the specialization. We are going for Dawn. Dawn is basically for convert mana. If you have convert mana, you can do Hammer spec, but this one is gonna work for most of the people. We won't convert mana, so we wouldn't run out of mana. Hail. And Sympathy. You want to have HP absorbent hit whenever you're running convert mana, otherwise you're gonna die. So don't pick up convert mana too early. First of all, get this point, and after that, pick up Convert Mana and you're gonna be good. Charm Blessings, we are looking to start with Vespa, then into Boreal, and after that, you have a choice. Castor or Alyssa, or even both, depending on what you're looking to do. Is it uh, three blessings or four blessings? But Vespa, Boreal, starting ones are the best ones. Alyssa has more damage amp than Castor, but Castle has some defenses. So if you're looking for more damage, you can go Vespa Boreal Alyssa. If you're looking for more defense, you can go Vespa Boreal Castor. And if you just want to pick up everything, 
You can go Vespa, Boreal, Alyssa, and Castor with 140 blessings on every single one. 4x 140 basically. Charm affixes. So we always want to have a maximized damage on our charm. This is where our damage is going to come from. After that, damage when dual wielding or damage, just a damage multiplier. Both going to work, right? Just damage multiplier, something like this. So maximize damage, damage multiplier, or damage when dual wielding. The chance to do double maximize damage on hit, this one is not good when you have band of certainty and you want to have band of certainty 100%. As with band of certainty, this decreases in value by a lot. So basically the best charm you can have is gonna be this. This is where most of your damage is gonna come from and this is a perfect charm to have. But if you can't find the perfect one, just try to get maximized damage and then whatever you can get on damage multipliers or even chance to deal double maximize damage, it's still gonna be better than nothing. And for the legendary prefix, you want to have strike damage amplification. But whatever legendary prefix you have, you still have to use it, but when you're trying to min-max your build, you want to aim for strike damage amplification. This is the best one for this build. Relics, as always, we start with Sebda. For Chaos Resist and the passive, on the active we want mental stimulation with cooldown recovery speed and increased buff effect. For the second one, we can go for Spica. Spica is the best for the Earth energies, especially early into the game. If you don't want to do Spica in here, you can also do Hamal, because Hamal gives us poison penetration and poison damage. So it's up to you. Spica is good, but Hamal can be even better. For the third one, I'm choosing Castor because of the Sanctum effect and Sanctum effect duration. So this is basically buffs on the map, like Swiftness, Enhance, Enrage, Fortune, and so on. And if you don't need Enhance Sanctum Effect, you can go for some extra strength, which is basically gonna be HP, or even Shout Skill Rune Duration. For, some, for example, this is gonna be affected by the Shadow Provocation. And Enhance Range, if you need more area effect. So Castor is really nice utility one, there is so many choices on this one. And the last one, as always, Boreal, we have no other choice because we only have 15 levels, so we just pick up extra HP. This is the skill board you want to have late into the game. This doesn't follow any methods, so it works for any season. Let's start with Deadly Poison Claw. You want to awaken it to Source for area effect and area damage with Poison Damage Jump. Warrior Shadow into Source. Fighting Spirit into Source. Smash into Source. Persistence into Origin. Deadly Poison Claw into Verity. If you don't have... Verity, away in a deadly poison, do not use it as otherwise you're not gonna be able to get damage amplification as the Verity Awakening lets enables this link room to inflict venom. And elemental damage amplification awaken it to source. However, this one can be changed to many more links. And those links are as elemental damage amplification doesn't require any requirements. I kept it in here just for simplicity, but if you are willing to do or to complete some requirements, melee damage amp is a good choice. Whenever you awaken it to origin, you want to be able to inflict dot, otherwise you can't use it without the awakening, same stuff as deadly poison claw. After that, you can use something like strike, if you have over capped attack speed, or concentrated area damage if you're willing to sacrifice a little bit of area effect on this build. Even poison penetration can work on higher level maps. After that, and fighters rot, you want to awaken it to enhance effect, which is origin or source. Source, I would say, is better in general as it gives more enhanced skill rune effect, but if you need duration, you can do origin, but duration not necessarily translates into more damage, so keep it source. After that, I added two, three more links. That's enhanced effect, decreased duration. Remember, decreased duration, you might lose damage. If you do it too early, always test your damage, and totem activation upon using enhanced skill, and that's a weakened totem, awaken it into source. 
for more elemental damage when the totem dies as it's gonna be hard to keep it alive on high level maps. On Shadow Provocation I also added, added Predator's Roar for some more damage and Enhance Effect at the same time. I switched Leap Attack to Penetrating Slash, just fast animation so you don't stop doing damage basically. I added Shadow of Justice to remove hard CC but you want to link it with buff activation upon crowd control so it would work automatically. Remember you still need to put this skill onto your action bar otherwise it's not gonna work. For season 6 meta, skill bot looks the same. I'm not gonna change anything too much in here, everything still works. The only difference is you want to use extract energy, awaken it to source and you want max energy plus 2 to basically negate the tooltip which is minus 2 and of course extract poison energy. These two on maximized builds work really really well and you're gonna see that is the biggest damage you can get of any other links that you can use. So this is what I recommend, just use this, a lot of damage, no worries. For itemization, on the maximized build, like always, we are looking for a weapon that has the lowest critical base. On the Dagus, it is 9, as the low critical base will mean more attack damage on the base. For the affixes, you're not gonna be able to get all of them, but in the priority order, it would be weapon attack multiplier, maximize damage multiplier, after that, poison damage flat, weapon attack flat, and after that, weapon speed or poison damage. So get as much as you can. The more the more good affixes you have, you're gonna see the damage scaling is insane. The only thing to remember is that when you are dual wielding, your two daggers has to be close to the same as all the affixes are divided by two. So for example, if you have a maximized damage on one dagger and you don't have it on another dagger, your maximized damage is going to be divided by 2. So yeah, with dual wielding, there is a few nuances that I don't even like, but I want you to know. The only thing that is not divided by 2 is poison damage flat and authority mods like additional lightning damage on every hit, additional cold damage on every hit. Those are not divided by 2. So remember that. On the armor side, it depends on what kind of armors you are using. On this one, I have armor multiplier. For dodge, it's going to be dodge multiplier. But this prefix is necessary if you want to survive. Always focus on armor multiplier, dodge rate multiplier, and then some HPs on the suffix, on the prefix. You don't need that much damage on your gear early, and I'm only talking about the early game. Late into the game, there is more nuances, but those I'm going to keep out of the way to not make it too complicated. On the suffix, the only thing you need is resistances. I added chaos resist, but just roll whatever resistances you need to cap it. And if you want more offensive roll, hit rate is the only offensive thing you can get on non-authority chest. On other parts, it's still the same. On the rings, if you need more damage, you craft attack speed, elemental damage multipliers, and so on. On the gloves, the same stuff, maximize damage, attack speed. If you need more defenses, just craft HPs or ammo multipliers with, with resist elemental resistances on the suffixes. For a critical build, we have to do some changes on the skill board and one of the changes are that we want to use Seal of Striking, a Seal of Persistence doesn't work anymore for us. You can awaken it to Verity. Other than that, on Deadly Poison Claw. Melee damage amplification, awaken it into origin, deadly poison into verity, same stuff applies. Fighting spirit into source. And then I added iron will, but you don't have to use iron will, you can use the links that I mentioned before. It's elemental damage amplification, concentrated area damage. If you are willing to lose area effect, poison penetration is good, but like on really high level maps. Other that, strike if you can lose some attack speed. And they also added Extract Poison Energy. As Extract Poison Energy Link Rune gives you quite a bit of damage amplification per poison energy, so it's still good. But this more applies to Season 6. If Extract Poison Energy is gonna get a nerf, you will have to use the 
links that I mentioned before. So I'm just gonna add concert area damage like this. But in season six, you can still use extract poison energy. It's really strong, even for a critical build. Just not extract energy, as you don't want any random energies on your build, only poison energies. On Zodiacs, you want to make a changes to your rainbow. Instead of going distorted senses, you want to pick up an elaborate attack. For the charm affixes on a critical build, this is what we're looking for. Critical rate multiplier and critical damage multiplier 100%. You want to have both of those. And the third affix can be anything. It can be maximized damage, it can be just damage multiplier, it can be damage when dual wielding. However, maximized damage is the best because when you do a critical build, you can get a legendary prefix that says maximization chance. What that means that on critical build, you can also do a maximization build. And that's why maximized damage suffix is so much better on a charm together with legendary prefix maximization chance. If you don't get maximization chance, of course, another is strike damage jump. Also works really good. Uh, same on the charm. You can get damage multiplier or damage when dual wielding. However, remember critical rate multi and critical damage multi is necessary for critical builds. Itemization for a critical build on the weapon, we want to have a dagger with critical rate 11 because this is the highest critical base you can have. On the affixes, you want always to have gear critical rate multiplier. This is the most important one. Without this, critical build doesn't work. After that, in priority would be weapon damage multiplier, weapon damage flat, poison damage flat, critical damage and weapon speed. That's how the close to a perfect weapon would look like, especially in the early game. On the equipment, on the armors and so on, you do the same as maximize build. You just roll some HP multipliers, HP flats, armor multiplier or dodge multiplier, depending on what you choose to do. And on the suffixes, resistances. The only difference is that rings can roll attack critical rate multis. So on the ring, you want attack critical rate multis. On the gloves, you want attack critical rate multis if you're trying to craft more offensive critical gear. Uniques, we need a few of those. So the main one is Vespa Destruction. This one makes this build two times better as it inflicts additional hit upon using dual wheel. So what it means, deadly poison hits only once, with these gloves it's gonna hit twice, so twice the damage. So these gloves are necessary for this build to be good, but these gloves drop really easy and most likely you're gonna have one already. After that, it's only whatever you choose to do maximize build or a critical build. For maximize build, we want band of certainty, this is the best one, and you always use this ring. And if you're doing critical, you want caster refraction just because it has a flat critical rate. This is everything. I think this build is really strong this season. And if you like daggers, just do it. GG's, have fun and see you in the next one.